I'm delighted to be here with you all today as we honor the service and sacrifices made by our nation's veterans and their families. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the city of Gardena again uh, for inviting me here today and for all of the hard work on behalf of the veterans of our community. As a nation, we have a hallowed duty to the men and women who serve in our military. Our obligation to care for them when they are abroad is as important as our responsibility to welcome them back home from the battlefield. Today, we're still gaining a better understanding of the many challenges veterans and their families face following their service. In LA County, the population in homeless veterans has increased dramatically despite an overall reduction in homelessness nationally. And while we are targeting homeless veterans in the region through improved strategies and better aligned resources, more has to be done to end homelessness across all populations. Access to quality <laughs> health care and protection of veteran education benefits are also issues that I take seriously in Congress. We must ensure veterans a system that serves them and their families with high quality, innovative care. Too many are falling between the cracks, facing long waits at the VA, suffering under the weight of mental illness without the help they need. The statistics themselves are alarming. A recent VA study continued to demonstrate a mental health crisis among our veterans where 20 commit suicide every day. Veterans only make up 9% of the American population, yet they account for 18% of suicides nationwide. 70% of those veterans are not regular users of VA services. PTSD among veterans does not discriminate. It affects service members across all ages, races, and genders. In the next Congress, I will continue to tackle the obstacles facing veterans in need of help. My bill, the Veteran Mental Health Defense Act, prioritizes medical professionals and me medical students with training and skills to treat veterans with PTSD and traumatic brain injury through the National Health Service Corps, a program which currently enlists over 10,000 medical professionals and students to deliver much needed health care all over the country. Many of us have also been witness to the deceptive and fraudulent practices of some of the for-profit college industry, of the hundreds of thousands of students who have been affected by school closures, a large portion of affected students or veterans who have used their earned benefits from the VA and Department of Defense to pay living costs and tuition. In most cases, these benefits cannot be restored in the event of fraud. We have come a long way in curbing predatory behavior in this industry. The Department of Education's latest for-profit college regulation implements a policy I have advocated for my entire public service career. Institutions of higher education are now prohibited from including mandatory arbitration clauses in their enrollment agreements. Students who have been defrauded or been affected by other illegal practices by these schools can now seek justice through the courts. Many of you here today are also aware of the recent outrage across the country when almost 10,000 soldiers, many of whom served multiple combat tours, were ordered to repay large enlistment, enlistment rather, bonuses after a federal audit discovered overpayments and paperwork errors by the California National Guard. While the oversight and response to this scandal was egregious and unfair to our veterans, families, I commend Secretary Carter for suspending the Department of Defense's efforts to recoup those bonuses from soldiers who accepted them in good faith. I remain as steadfast as ever committed to work with my colleagues to ensure soldiers are protected from undue financial strains and to uplift 
service members for their distinguished service to this nation. On the battlefield, the military pledges to leave no soldier behind. As a nation, let it be our pledge to leave no veteran behind. Once again, I salute and thank each of you for your service to the country. And now, uh, with the permission of Quartermasters Norm Shabana and Steve Moriyama, we'd like to do something special as part of your Veterans Day event here in Gardena. Some of you may be aware that the Department of Defense has created a three-year program entitled the United States of America Vietnam War Commemoration. Its stated purpose is to recognize, thank, and honor United States military veterans who served on active duty during the Vietnam War period. They have defined that period as November 1st, 1995 to May 15, 1975, regardless of location served. In my opinion, recognizing our Vietnam veterans is long overdue. And the 50th commemoration is an opportunity to help make up for many years of neglect. Those of us who were around during Vietnam remember all too well how divisive and controversial the war was here on the home front. This long, ugly conflict often separated friends and families, both physically and politically. It unfortunately created divisions which have taken years to heal. Too often, our service people came home to a country and communities which were totally conflicted about the incredibly difficult experience we had asked our young people to endure in a country far, far away. The point of this 50-year commemoration, however, is that no matter what we have felt about the war, we should honor and acknowledge the sacrifice made by our veterans who answer their country's call and serve to the best of their ability. It is also the commemoration's intent to acknowledge and express appreciation for the sacrifices your families made, both during your enlistment and over the many years since. While it is merely a small token of our appreciation, we hope this Department of Defense official Vietnam veteran lapel pin that we're going to give out today will be worn with pride. And we hope the certificate of special recognition that we will be presenting to each veteran will be something you will be proud to display at home and share with your families. So with that, may I ask all of the Vietnam Air veterans that are here today, first to please stand. If you served in Vietnam, please stand. And I'm going to ask Quartermasters Norm Shibana and Steve Moriyama to please join me here at the podium while I ask the Vietnam Air veterans to please come forward. Please come and give them a big round of applause while they are coming forward. You can just keep clapping while they come. Let them know how we are determined that they will get the recognition that they deserve. Keep applauding. Keep right on applauding our Vietnam era veterans. We honor all veterans, but today we pay special attention to our Vietnam Air veterans. Can we help? See if he wants to come up the steps. You want to come up? No, he's just going to take pictures. OK. Now, if you will allow me to describe the symbolism of the pen you're about to receive. The bald eagle represents courage, honor, and dedicated service 
to our nation. As one of the most recognizable and notable American symbols, it is emblazoned with distinction on numerous military insignia. In many Native American cultures, an eagle represents man's connection to the divine because they fly higher than any other bird. The blue circle around the edge of the pen matches the canton of the American flag and signifies vigilance, perseverance, and justice. The circle shape and blue color also match the official seal of the Vietnam War commemoration, which is part of each certificate we will be presenting to you. The laurel wreath is a time-honored symbol representing victory, integrity, and strength. The stripes behind the eagle again represent the American flag. The six stars represent the six allies who served, sacrificed, and fought alongside one another in Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, the Republic of Korea, Thailand, and the United States. And on the back of each pen, the message, a grateful nation thanks and honors you, is embossed on the side closest to the heart of the wearer, along with the Vietnam commemoration name. And so with that, and again on behalf of a grateful nation, I am proud to thank you for your service, your valor, and your sacrifice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it may be a long time in coming it may be that many did not understand what was happening with the Vietnam War, but we do know that those who served suffered an awful lot, not only in Vietnam, but when they came home. Uh, because those who did not agree with the war oftentimes took it out on those who made sacrifices to ensure uh, that our nation was safe, and those who disagreed with it, I think now understand what was going on and how we must always honor those who answer the call and who are willing to go forward uh, in an effort to protect our nation without asking questions, but just doing their duty to our country. Let's hear it for our Vietnam Air veterans all over again, please. With that, Pastor Cruz, where are you? We have a certificate of special recognition presented to Sergeant Norm Chibana, retired, on the occasion of being honored with the Vietnam veteran lapel pin during Gardena's 2016 Veterans Day commemoration event and in recognition of your service in the United States Air Force during the Vietnam War with deep appreciation for the sacrifice made by you and your family during your enlistment period and beyond. I extend thanks and respect of a grateful nation. Congratulations and thank you so very, very much. Come on, let's hear it, we can applaud. Thank you very much. Uh, where's Pastor Cruz? Right behind me. Thank you so very, very much, Pastor Cruz. This is an important day. This is a wonderful day. We thank you for your service and your participation. And with that, I will turn the microphone back over to you. Thank you very much. Can we continue to show love with a round of applause for our veterans? Thank you very much, Congresswoman, for your work and what you're doing with the veterans. We thank you.